naturally listening to other people's whispers. So much of your life. It's not just the devil's whispers. The devil has a pretty strong network. He uses remote control and uses whispers from people. And you're so much of your decisions in life. What are you going to wear? Where are you going to work? How are you going to get married? When are you going to have a child? When are you going to do this? When are you going to do that? All of these decisions are dictated by what? What are people going to say? What are this people going to say? What is that one going to say? What are they going to say? What are they going to say? What about this? What about those comments? What about the public? What about... Stop. Stop worrying about people. Stop worrying about people. What did the devil want? Recognition, remember? He wants you to be obsessed with recognition. He wants you to be obsessed with other people's opinion of you. And when you let that go, oh my God, is that freedom. Oh, you don't have to be pretend to be anybody. You could just be yourself. Allah's happy with what He made. He's pretty proud of what He made, isn't He? He said He sculpted you and sculpted you to perfection, so you're completely content with the way Allah made you, and no longer do you need to be like anybody else, no longer do you need to dress like anybody else, talk like anybody else, work like anybody else, make money like anybody else, you don't have to go to parties like anybody else, you don't need to fit in with anybody, because you fit with Allah and that's good enough for you. And when that happens, you become so liberated, people notice, hey, why are you so free? You know, you, you know what, you know, you're no longer, you're no longer, Weird, you're actually unusually confident. That's when you become unusually confident. Because you don't care what people think. That's no longer your concern. Somebody asked you the other day, Fat, how did you become so confident? <laughs> That's exactly how it sounded. Like. <laughs> no, they didn't, but actually, the way I remember all of you is in different voices. So. <laughs> How did you become so confident? And I said, because I put a goofy on. <laughs> this is what it was. I no longer care. This is one of you, 10,000 of you, it doesn't matter. I'm okay. Because now, there's nothing to fear except Allah. I let all the other fears go. I'm completely fine, not wearing shoes, walking around in socks. I'm okay. It doesn't matter. Because I'm more comfortable this way. So you have to let that go and you will find that the strength Allah will give you, then Shaban will not be. He'll still come to you, but he can't come to you from the front anymore. He can't come to you from the front. He can't scare you away. He can't scare you. There's still other attacks, right? But you've got to stop him from these different, different attacks. Let me finish up your Listen to this. When people do shameless things, they say, this is our culture. What do they say? This is our? Well, everybody did this. Our parents did this. Our grandfather did this. They all did this. This is the way we are. This is our tradition. And then they say, Allah told us to do this. So there's two things. They do the wrong thing. And first they say, we do it because of our culture. And some people even say, it's because Allah wants us to do this. Now the thing is, who's our father? In the story, who's our father? Adam alayhi salam. Adam alayhi salam is our culture. <laughs> and he's the one who's covering himself up. So nobody after him gets to say our tradition is this. Because our tradition goes back to some other tradition, which goes back to some other tradition, which goes back to Adam alayhi salam. So that's basically saying, what are, you, what are you talking about? Your father was the one who I gave clothes to. Don't be shameless after him. Shamelessness here means something else too. Shamelessness also means defying Allah. The devil was shameless the way he spoke to Allah. The way he let his anger speak with Allah. Don't let your anger have you speak with Allah that way. Don't give that anger. And so finally, for Amar Rabbi with this, وَأَقِيمُوا وُجُوهَكُمْ عَنْدَ كُلِّ مَشْجِعِ وَلْقُوهُ مُخْلِسِينَ لَرُقِينَ كَمَا رَدَقْتُمْ تَعُونَ This is where I'll end with you guys. He says, My master has commanded us to be fair. We have to be just. And this means Allah does not want you to deprive yourself in this life. Allah wants you to have a good life here too. Allah started with that. It doesn't mean if you have Islam, you cannot have a good life. But the things the devil wants you to do, he will convince you you cannot be happy unless you follow the devil. This is how you become happy. Allah says, be fair, and so long as you're fair, you can be happy. Just don't cross the line. I'm going to be with this. And then, turn your faces back towards Allah at every time of prayer. 
every prayer should remind us where we started. And this is why the next phrase is, Sincerely, for the sake of Allah, the way He started you is the way He's going to bring you back. Where the story started was in the company of Allah. Where the story is going to end is in the company of Allah. The last comment I have for you is about sincerity. Because Allah says at the end, He wants us to be what? Sincere. So listen. Have you heard before somebody say you should do everything for the sake of Allah? Yeah, that's wrong. What? That. No, you don't. What's that? Yep, that's wrong. Prayer is for the sake of Allah. Hajj is for the sake of Allah. Fasting is for the sake of Allah. Worship is for the sake of Allah. But when I hug my mother, it's because I love my mom. It's not for the sake of Allah. When you're going down the street and an old lady needs help with her grocery bags, and you say, here man, I can carry that for you. You didn't do that for the sake of Allah. You did it because she's an old lady and she needed help. So you did it for the sake of an old lady. 